the Sixers get a must win against the Miami Heat. And I got to say, people in the media were saying that, oh, I'm not going to take the Sixers seriously until they beat the Heat. We don't know what Embiid's going to be. We do. We do know what Embiid's going to be. Embiid's going to come back and just be the guy he's been. Obviously, he's still a little rusty. He hasn't played in over 30 games, but he is that guy. And and whenever he's in the, on the court, he makes Tyrese Maxey, he helps Tyrese Maxey become the best Tyrese Maxey he can be. This guy dropped 37 points last night to a near triple-double. Tyrese Maxey had 37 points, 11 assists, and 9 rebounds. That is one of the best performances of the season of Tyrese Maxey, in my opinion. I think he was aggressive throughout the whole game. Whenever Embiid was not on the court, it was Tyrese's game. It was Tyrese's game. And I said this a couple videos back that the Joel Embiid injury actually helped Tyrese Maxey in leadership qualities and being more confident on the court. Whenever, well, let's say the last two games, right? Or not last two games, this game. <laughs> Whenever Embiid was not on the court, Tyrese Maxey was just ultra aggressive, ultra aggressive, shooting up shots. He was like, okay, Embiid's not on the court. I'm not, I don't have to pass it to Embiid most of the time. I'm going to be taking majority of my shots now. And I feel like that's what really did help our team. And then whenever Embiid wasn't on the court, we were still able to manage a lead, have a lead, or even push the lead further. So yeah, I'm very proud of Maxi. I think Maxi is becoming a better player every game. I mean, every game I see him play, I just see growth in his game. So it's amazing to see. And it's looking like his mid-range shot is, is, is amazing right now. His mid-range shot is... Is, is money he does a, he does a, a crossover drives in people think he's going to go for the lamp he stops on a dime and shoots up a midi i mean i love his game i don't think he has any weaknesses right now his weaknesses his weakness was his mid-range game i guess right when he first came in the league his weakness was three-point shooting and now he's one of the best three-point shooters in the league i just think this guy is a once in a generational type player i think he's similar to a kobe obviously he might not have the same career as kobe did but he is similar to a Kobe, his work ethic is amazing, and you know, I just have all the respect for Max. He's a young guy, and he he, you can tell he wants to win. So yeah, man, I love love that kid, man. He he bought out. I think Kyle Lowry had a great game as well. You know, point wise, he's not going to drop twenty points every game, but he had eight points, five assists, six rebounds, and he plays really good defense. He's always in the right position to take a charge. He's always in the right position to get a swat or or, or a clutch rebound that that we need. So yeah, I think Kyle Lowry is going to help wonders in, in the playoffs. I think he's going to make winning plays. And, you know, for a long time, Sixers haven't had winning players, players that make winning plays that can win you a game in the playoffs. I mean, Pat Bev was one of them, but Kyle Lowry just does it to another level because his offensive game is, is better than Patrick Beverly's ever was. And Kyle Lowry is just an ultimate leader as well. So yeah, I think Kyle Lowry is really going to help this team thrive in the playoffs. And let's see if he can get on this run at the end of the season. And Kelly Oubre had a, had a nice game as well. He had 18 points, 8 rebounds. And the thing is, I like to see Kelly Oubre get 8 boards, right? I want him to be high, at least over 4 rebounds, right? Um, I like that because that shows that he's, he's, he's doing other things besides just trying to score. He had 0 assists, which is obviously not what you want to see out of Kelly Oubre. But, I mean, he's, he's just in, in, he's in attack mode most of the game. So, I can't, I can't even deny. I can't, it can't be like, oh, why is he doing that? So, yeah, 18 points, not a bad game. He had the most minutes in the game besides maxi 41 minutes so yeah i mean he he balled out last game i think he he's gotten way, so much better as a team player like i've been saying his defense has gotten so much better throughout the season and yeah there's not really much i can really say about this game for for uber i think he just balled out and was consistent throughout the game so yeah and then ah oh, this sucks because buddy healed is my guy but buddy healed two points 12 minutes it's looking like his minutes are just dropping by the game right uh, Nick Nurse is like, man, you're not really good at defense. You're not great at offense. What can I really have you out on the floor for? So, yeah, he had two points, two rebounds, 12 minutes. Not much from Buddy Heald. It really does suck because I feel like I had so much promise. And, and even I feel like most Sixers fans had so much faith in Buddy Heald, thinking he was going to, in quotation marks, change the season. Yeah, it's looking like he's barely going to even be on the roster in the playoffs so yeah um let's hope he can get something going on with Embiid because I really do want to see a two-man game between Buddy Hield and Embiid but I mean Embiid has a lot of let's say connections because I also like the connections between Nicholas Batum and Embiid as well I feel like they have a really good connection I feel like they joke around a lot they talk a lot on the court which is I I like to see Embiid doesn't really do that much he doesn't interact 
that much on the court. So whenever I see him talking or or smiling or even being intense in a conversation in game, it's 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 important to me. So yeah, I mean, Embiid's going to have definitely have to get this connection growing with Buddy Heald because we're going to need Buddy Heald to step up. We can't win in the playoffs with Buddy Heald having two points, right? We need him to be playable in the playoffs. And the only way for him to be playable is him to make shots. Make shots and get open. We ha- I mean, I know we have plays. We've had plays of Buddy Heald running off ball, but he's just not athletic to get open. Um, maybe we can find some plays where we can get you know confusing we can confuse the defense but you know we'll see what happens obviously it's only been two games with buddy healed with Embiid. there's a big difference between playing with Embiid and not so you know we should give him some time but i also time is not on our side we have like five games left and we play the grizzlies tomorrow at eight that should be a winnable game um this game the heat was our hardest game on the rest of the schedule so I mean, we do have a pretty high chance of becoming the sixth seed. We're one game behind. So as long as we can just keep winning these games, I feel like we're pretty solid. We can be in that sixth seed, and we don't have to worry about the play-in. And we would, as of now, if we if we were the sixth seed, we would play the Cavs. We wouldn't have to play the Bucks or the Celtics in the first round, which is honestly the main reason why I want to be sixth seed, right? So, you know, let's, let's keep hoping – uh, you know, things could be worse, right? Embiid could have never came back, and this season could have been nothing. This season could have just been a waste. But Embiid's coming back, right? We got our guy back. Tyrese Maxey's playing out of his mind. We have one of the best benches we've ever had. I'm pretty confident. I'm feeling good about this playoffs. How are you guys feeling? Drop a comment, like, subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.